should a tall athlete be in the same position or a different position than a short athlete at the start of an Olympic lift? We're gonna explore just one size fit all, looking at what stays the same and what changes. All right, let's go right into what stays the same. Now, when we talk about foot pressure, we're looking to make sure that athlete has their full flat foot on the ground. They don't have all their weight up on their toe where their heel's coming off. They don't have all their weight in their heel where their toes are coming up and they're sat way down. They have their full foot loaded and they feel pressure in that heel in that ball of the foot, that area behind that pinky toe. Now there's gonna be a little bit more of an emphasis towards ball of the foot, middle of the foot, but we want that full foot down and loaded. And no matter how tall, short, long, whatever you are, you're gonna have that similar foot pressure in your foot, and that's very important. Second point that stays the same, shoulders are pulled down, so our scapulas are pulled down and the shoulder is neutral, okay? We're not letting, I don't care how long, tall, short you are, we're not letting this shoulder unlock and roll forward on us sitting out front. So I, I've seen some taller athletes they will kind of do that, seen some shorter athletes kind of unlock and do that. This is a point, a key point that stays the same throughout body types is that shoulder blade is pulled down and locked and our shoulder stays neutral. Note that I said pulled down. Think about pulling that, that scapula down towards your lats, pulling it down with your lats instead of together. We don't want to pull them together. We want to pull them down while keeping that shoulder neutral. The third thing that stays the same when we get into a start position, no matter our body type, is we have a nice flat back. Now remember, I feel a lot of coaches when they hear flat back, they just wanna make sure that there isn't flexion or there isn't a rounding in the back. Yes, that is important. However, a lot of coaches forget about extension or excessive arching in the back. That can also lead to trouble. We're looking for a nice flat back throughout all body types when the athlete gets up, avoiding excessive flexion or rounding or excessive extension or arching. So another point that stays the same, nice flat back. Okay, fourth thing we're gonna bring up here today on point that stays the same throughout all body types is the elbow knee relationship. So when the athlete comes in and gets set to lock, what we're looking at here when they're right about to come off the ground is if you zoom in, we see that this elbow and knee are flush, right? So the front of the knee is flush with the front of the arm, right? Now I'm not talking about touching. We're not talking about the elbow and knee having to touch. We're talking about the knee is far enough through that it is flush with the front of the arm rather than behind it, okay? Now this front of the knee can also come past the arm or elbow a little bit, which is fine, but we're looking for it to be in that flush realm. The more we get back, the higher the hip's going to go, and typically bad things start to happen. So general rule, general, general guideline, elbow and knee relationship is going to help us quite a bit set hip heights and keep things rolling well. Now let's go on into what doesn't stay the same, what varies. Now one thing that varies on an athlete is the height of their hip, okay? So with an athlete with a really long femur, that hip is going to be a little bit higher. For an athlete that has a really short femur, that hip's going to be a little lower. But remember, we don't even have to think about this as long as we have this elbow-knee relationship. That's going to set the height of the hip. If his knee was behind his elbow, his hip would come up. And if it's flush or through, it's set into a pretty good position as long as those other key points that I mentioned are also in place. Weight balance on the feet, right? If his knee came all the way through, okay, all the way through in here, his weight would go more towards that heel, thus breaking the weight balance on the foot. He needs to keep a nice flat back as well as lock in those shoulders as well and we'll be rolling, but we don't have to worry about hip height. It's gonna adjust, but we're gonna be able to take care of it with those four points that we talked about prior. Another thing that's going to vary from athlete is their back angle. Okay, 
from here to here to here. There's gonna be a little bit of variance in that back angle. However, remember the other points holding true are gonna help us with that. Elbow and knee relationship, weight balance on the foot, shoulders pulled down and locked with that neutral shoulder and a flat back are gonna keep us in a good position, but the angle of that's gonna vary. So if you're thinking that there's a certain degree that everyone should have with that back angle, it's gonna vary a little bit, but check out these other points because that really can help us get things set. Another point that varies depending on the athlete and their size and their body type is going to be foot width, okay? Width of the feet is something that we look more at comfort of the athlete and ability to get into those other key points that we mentioned at the beginning of the video, weight balance and all of them. I won't list everyone again. Um, that's going to vary. Now, if the feet are so narrow that it doesn't let the athlete get into those other key points we mentioned, say they come down and they look a little squished and they can't really get a flat back, then we're going to have them open up their feet just a little bit. Another cue that we often use is what's a comfortable spot for you to jump at? And some athletes will bring their feet in really narrow and say, hey, I'm comfortable to jump from here. But when they sit down to the bar, they can't get that flat back. So we open them up just a little bit and that really helps them get into a better position. So foot width is going to vary by athlete. Think of those other keys and know there's going to be variance. And finally, to wrap it up, we have hand placement. Okay, hand placement's gonna vary by athlete, by limb length, by body type. But remember, the the way we find the hand placement isn't necessarily gonna vary. So after this little clip, I'm gonna give just a quick little intro of how to quickly find um, your hand placement on the bar for the snatch. But we're, what, look, what we're looking for is when we get up here into this power position for the bar to be right there at that pubic bone area. So we want to find a placement of the bar where when we hold onto the bar with our knees unlocked and our hips unlocked, our shoulders and arms nice and long, that that bar sits in that correct spot. Let me go into intro here, but just know that hand placement, all athletes, tall, short, long, you know, different um, body lengths aren't going to be grabbing the bar in the same spot, but there's a real quick way to find that spot with all athletes, but the hand width will vary. All right, and as to promise, a real quick way to have an athlete find their snatch grip, here's what I have them do. Stand up with the bar, legs locked, okay? My knees locked, my hips locked. What I want them to do at this point is I want them to unlock at the hip and knee. Watch how Chelsea here unlocks and sits slightly. So she's unlocked at the knee, unlocked at the hip, and now I'm just gonna have her extend her arms out to that point where she feels the bar right here that in that crease, in that pubic bone area. Okay, her hands will be even on the bar. That's something to check. They're not shrugging in the shoulder or bending the arm to get there. Those shoulder, shoulder blades are pulled down as we talked about so far in this video. Here we found a very good placement. Typically in a class, I'll have them lift the bar over their head, you know, let their wrist lie back and make sure they're in a good position with that arm slightly behind the ear. But this is how we can find a very quick snatch grip. And of course, one thing I always emphasize with the new athlete is, Remember where your grip is, even on the bar, and don't change it, because we all know that's a path of frustration. So, hope this helps, and take care, guys.